Yo, what is up, my dudes? This is Devin of Garbage Squad, and we're going to be doing a Medolce deck profile. So this is my take on Medolce's, uh, well, I say my take, but <clears throat> in a sense, every Medolce deck is basically the same. <laughs> you just run, basically, you just run triple copies of everything in the archetype because Medolce's can't really run anything else. But anyways, Medolce as a deck itself, honestly, it's actually a pretty good rogue deck. I'd say some things about this deck is that it doesn't really put up like huge negation boards. It's not really meant to do that. Medolce's actually excel better at breaking your opponent's boards and then just OTKing and you know going for game and stuff like that. But anyways, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get on to this deck profile. All right, first we're playing triple Medolce Magellan. So this is basically your Stratos of the deck. Uh, when it's normal or flip summoned, you can add one Medolce monster from your deck to your hand. So this will be your main starter of the deck. Then we got triple Medolce Petting Sassur. So Petting Sassur is actually a really great card in this deck. Really great extender uh, and just helps, pretty much just helps your plays uh, a lot more. So basically what this card does is that if there are no monsters in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. And the second effect is that when this card is special summoned, you can special summon a Medolce monster from your deck, but reduce its level by one. So your main target for this is usually going to be Medolce Pudding Sass. Uh, to go into your rank four place. Then we got triple Medolce Angeli. Angeli, uh, you can tribute this card, then special summon a Medolce monster from your deck. And while that special summoned monster is face up on the field, it cannot be destroyed by battle. But during the end phase of your next turn, that monster will be shuffled into your deck. But that effect won't really be an issue because uh, usually you'll use that monster uh, to go into other things. Next, we're playing Triple Medolce Hootcake. So Hootcake is also a really good card in this deck. This card allows you to target one monster in your graveyard, banish it, and then special summon a Medolce monster from your deck. So the banishing effect, it's not specific to uh, Medolce monsters. You can banish literally anything. Then we got Triple Medolce Missing Gelato. So when this card is special summoned while you control a beast Medolce monster, you can add a Medolce spell and trap from a spell or trap from your deck to your hand and this is not a hard once per turn so if you manage to special summon messengelato multiple times uh in one turn you will get uh that many spell and traps next i play double medolce mew fuel mew fully i don't know how to say this name but anyways not too many people are playing this card uh but for the pretty much for the monster count i do like it so when this card is normal summoned, you can special summon a Medolce monster from your hand. So basically, if you have uh, Mew Fully and, I don't know, let's say either Petting Sessor or, or Angeli, you basically can still go off on your plays. So if you don't draw into Magellan, then you'll have at least this. Next, I play one Medolce Pudding Sess. Pudding Sess is just because we need it for the uh, Chocolate a la Mode shenanigans. But it has some pretty decent effects too. Uh, while you control no monsters in your graveyard, this card gains 800 attack and defense. And then her second effect is that after damage calculation, when this card battled a monster, you can target a card on the field and destroy it. Correction, you can target a card on your opponent's field and destroy it. Then to round off the Madolce monsters, I play one Madolce Shocks Valier. Uh, not too many people are playing this card either. I play it mainly for the name and honestly, it's not that bad either. So basically, while you control this card, your opponent cannot target any Medolce monsters you control for attacks except this one. And the card text does say that your opponent cannot target Medolce monsters you control for attacks except Medolce Shocks Failure. So there is no Medo uh, there is no Marauding Captain lock here. Uh, if you have double Shocks Failure out here, they can still attack into both your Shocks Valiers. And Madolce Shocks Valier has 1700 attack, so it is it is one of your stronger beat sticks that you'll have on board along with the uh, field spell. Then to round off the monsters, I play Triple Nibiru. So yes, Nibiru is not as effective anymore. There's decks out there who can actually still uh, play around Nibiru, but I think Nibiru is fine for like hand traps because like as far as hand traps go, Nibiru is probably one of the best ones um, in my personal opinion for Madolce specifically. Because I've playtested with Triple Ash Blossom and it hurts a lot. Like it hurts more than it helps. So for example, if I'm going second or something and I have to activate Ash and I have Petting Sessor in my hand, Petting Sessor becomes dead. B 
because I can't special summon it to get her effect. And it'll go the same way if I ran things like Ghost, uh, yeah, Ghost Bell or Skullmeister or DD Crow, uh, Droll and Lockbird. You could make an argument to run uh, the Cypher and Gamma and Driver because they do banish themselves, but it's like, I thought about it. I actually did think about running those as well in this deck, but the thing is that if you use the Gamma and Driver to end up going into, uh, well, I think, what is it called? Omega? I think that's the Synchro. Then you have the Gamma and the Driver in your graveyard, kind of dead or kind of hurting your plays. And if you do decide to banish them and leave your graveyard empty, you'll have the two Gammas left in your deck as bricks. So I opted not to play them. So yeah, Nibiru is just better in my opinion, as uh, like I said, as far as hand traps go for Madolches. Onto the spells, I play triple field spell, Madolche Chateau. So this is a really great card for Madolches. When this card is activated, you shuffle all Madolche monsters in your graveyard to your deck. And while this card is face up on the field, all Madolche monsters on the field gain 500 attack and defense. And if a monster or monsters in your graveyard would be returned to the deck by the effect of a Madolche monster, you can add it to your hand instead. So that's a nice effect. Next I'm playing triple Madolche Salon. So Salon is also a really great card. This card is what allows Madolches to kind of play through hand traps. So if you have Salon in your hand, there's a good chance even if you get Ash Blossomed, there's a good chance you can still go on with your plays. And what I mean by that is that Madolche Salon, it allows you to normal summon a second time a Madolche monster. And then its secondary effect is that if another Madolche card you control or in your graveyard is added to your hand or shuffled into the deck by a card effect, you have to set. I was about to say you can set, but no, it actually says set one sp uh, Madolche Spelling Trap from your deck directly onto the field. So this is a mandatory effect. It's not you can, it just says set to one. So with Salon, you'll most likely be setting down uh, Madolche Promenade, um, but I mean, you can also set other Madolche Spell and Traps uh, that you play. Next, I play Madolche Ticket. So Ticket is really good to help extend your plays if you have it. When a Madolche card you control is sent from basically your hand, or no, no, not your hand, <laughs> your field or graveyard to your hand or deck, you can add one Madolche monster from your deck to your hand. And then if you control a fairy type Madolche monster, you can actually special summon that monster instead. Then to end the spells, I play double Foolish Burial Goods. So Foolish Burial Goods, you just send a spell trap from your deck to your grave. That's it. That's really all it is. Um, and the card you're going to be mainly sending is Madolche Promenade. Because Promenade has a graveyard effect in which we will get to right now. That's the end of the spell lineup. So triple Madolche Promenade. Some people play two, some people just play one. Uh, Promenade is just a really good card in my personal opinion. So basically, Promenade is a one-time Omni Negate. So it can negate spells, traps, monster effects. And all you have to do is target a Medoche monster on your field or in the graveyard and put it back to your hand. And then you negate anything your opponent, any one card your opponent activated. And then Promenade's graveyard effect, as I mentioned earlier. You can banish this card from the graveyard then target one XC monster or XC Madolche monster you control. Then attach one Madolche monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard to it as material. So this is good for when you want to go into more um, like chocolate a la mode plays. So if you have any of your Madolche XC monsters out there, you can use Promenade's graveyard effect. Attach a pudding cess from hand, deck, or graveyard onto it, and then go into your chocolate a la mode plays. Then I play one Madolche lesson. I actually don't see too many people playing this card. Pretty much never. <laughs> I see nobody play this. Um, but me personally, I like this card. You can target a Madolche monster in your graveyard, shuffle it into the deck. And then if you do all Madolche monsters you currently control, gain 800 attack and defense. And this, this stat boost is permanent. Then you can shuffle one other monster from your graveyard into the deck. So it's just a good recycle card and you can get that nice 800 attack boost or 800 attack and defense st uh, stat boost. And then I played double Mind Crush. Uh, Mind Crush, I just didn't know what else to put in here. You could probably side these out for anything else. I don't know. Mind Crush just seemed like a good choice for me because um, a lot of decks, they add stuff directly from the deck to the hand. So it's like when they activate something to grab another card from their deck, you can just activate Mind Crush and then just send that card directly to the grave. Minecraft has actually helped me a lot. There's been times where I just 
hard activated mind crush and just called out a hand trap like ash blossom and uh yeah ash blossom will go to the grave and uh, i'll be safe to go on with my place so mind crush has its uses but again you can take it out for literally anything else if you want to then to end the main deck i play one strike and one judgment kind of just self-explanatory onto the extra deck i play triple madolce fresh sistart it takes two Madolce monsters to make this card, and while this card is pointing to a Madolce monster, Madolce spell and traps you control cannot be destroyed or targeted by card effects. So she's really good for protecting your your uh, your field spell or your ticket or even Salon. And if this card is to be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can shuffle a Madolce monster from your graveyard to the deck instead. So she also has a nice protection ability. Then I play triple copies of Madolce Queen Tiramisu. So this card is basically what breaks your opponent's boards. You detach material, target up to two Madolce cards in your graveyard, and shuffle them into the deck. Then you target up to that many Madolce monsters shuffled on your opponent's side of the field and shuffle them into the deck. And this does not target, so this would get over things like Dragoon. Then we're playing triple Madolce Teacher Glass Souffle. So this card is also really nice. Uh, the addition of this card to the deck is, or to the archetype, I guess, is what makes it actually have a decent first turn play. So it's rank 4, takes two level 4 Madolce monsters, and a quick effect, you can detach one material from this card, target a Madolce monster you control, and for the rest of the turn, it is unaffected by monster effects, except its own. Then its second effect, if a Madolce card is sent to the graveyard, while this card is face up on the field, you can target up to two cards in either player's graveyards and shuffle them into the deck. So for example, if your opponent sends like bricks or something to their graveyard, you could honestly just use Glass Souffle's effect, put those bricks back into your opponent's deck. But most of the time you're going to be using it to shuffle your own things back. Then to end the Madolce lineup for the extra deck, triple Madolce Pudding Sis, Chocolate a la Mode. So this card is really great, uh, pretty sure all of you guys know what these Madolce monsters do already. Chocolate Island Mode, what it does is that you can target a Madolce card in your graveyard and then shuffle it into the deck. And then its second effect, if it has Pudding Cess as a XC material, when a Madolce card is sent from the deck, or from the graveyard to the deck, you can detach a material, then special summon a Madolce monster directly from the deck. So yeah, Chocolate Island Mode, just a really good uh, extender or play extender, um, helps get more beat sticks on board. Then we play one Levier the Sea Dragon. So this is an old, old tech card that like old school Madolce players actually used. Um, I still like it at one. I don't really have anything. This is basically just a filler uh, in a sense. I just don't have any other cards that I would want to run aside from Levier the Sea Dragon. So, and I'm an old school Madolce player. So I do still like the Levier. So once per turn, you can detach one XC material from this card to target one banished level 4 or lower monster. Special summon that target to your side of the field. Then to end the extra deck, I play one Utopia and one Utopia the Lightning. I know people usually opt to run the uh, double or nothing. I think Utopia double. Um, but I just didn't want to play the, uh, the double or nothing as a brick. Um... Like, sure, it's another win condition, but oh, I just, I don't like playing. I don't like, really, I don't really like playing bricks. So, uh, I just went for the Utopia of the Lightning. All right, so now we've reached the combo section of this deck profile. And we're going to be using Madolce Magellene as our starter for this first combo. So, basically, what you want to do here is you want to summon the Magellene. Magellene will then activate its effect, grabbing you your Petting Sessor from the deck. Then using Petting Sessor's effect, you'll special summon it because you have no monsters in your graveyard. Then its effect will activate to special summon a Madolce monster, which will be Pudding Sess. Pudding Sess's level will now be at 4 because of Petting Sessor. Then Pudding Sess and uh, your Magellene will overlay. And placement does kind of matter here. Uh, pretty much just put it on either, like pretty much just on the end sides, just so it's out of the way. Uh, you're going to go into your Glass Souffle. Glass Souffle effect will activate, detaching the, uh, I'll just put the graveyard here, detaching the Magellene, and then for her effect, it doesn't matter which one you target, you can target yourself, you can target Penny Sassor, it doesn't really matter, but you're going to immediately overlay into Chocolate a la Mode, Chocolate a la Mode's effect, return the Magellene to the deck, 
and then detach for chocolate a la mode secondary effect you're going to want to detach the glass souffle then special summon the angeli angeli's effect tribute itself special summon the hoot cake then hoot cake's effect will activate you're going to want to banish the glass souffle specifically the glass souffle if you banish the angeli your combo is done your combo is ruined <laughs> so you're going to special summon the messengelato messengelato's effect will activate grabbing you your field spell then you're going to activate the field spell and then field spell will shuffle the angeli back oh wow uh, my bad then chocolate alum mode's effect once again detaching the pudding sus special summoning your second copy of messengelato and then the second Messenger Gelato will grab you your Medoche ticket. So from here, you can basically just activate the ticket. Then you're going to use your Penny Sassur and your Messenger Gelato on the end. Overlay into your second copy of Teacher Glass Souffle. Then you're going to use uh, Chocolate Ala Mode and Messenger Gelato. Go into your fresh to start. Then Glass Souffle's effect because Medoche monsters or Medoche cards were sent to the graveyard. You're basically going to want to target your Pudding Sess and your uh, Messenger Lotto. I guess I'll put the graveyard up here because <laughs> you can't really see it over here anymore. Uh, so yeah, you're going to shuffle these into your deck. Uh, because Chateau is on the field, you could add it to your hand, but I would recommend not because uh, you do want these from the or you do want these in the deck so you can special summon them directly. And then Ticket's effect will activate. You can actually add the Messenger Lotto from your deck to your hand again. But because you control a fairy type Medoche monster, Ticket will allow you to special summon it. Messing Gelato's effect again will allow you to grab your Medoche Promenade. So you can just go ahead and set Promenade. And this will basically be your first turn end board. So basically for interaction, first to start, she's pointing to uh two she's pointing to Medoche monsters. So your Medoche Chateau and Ticket cannot be targeted or destroyed. You have Messengelato as a 21 beat stick. Uh, Hoot Cake in defense mode cannot be destroyed by battle because of Angeli's effect. And Glass Soufflé can protect one of your Medoche monsters from card effect or monster effects. Then you have Promenade for your one Omni Negate. So yeah, this will basically be your ending board for going first with Magellan. So for this next combo, if you just have one Petting Sessure, uh, yeah, you're just gonna special summon the Petting Sessure. Petting Sessure's effect, you go into your Pudding sis, so it's just same combo. From here, you could technically link these off. Uh, for your fresh to start but I don't think that'd be <laughs> really that great because right now you have a 3k beat stick hoot cake that can't be destroyed by battle and your glass souffle so I think this is a decent to end off for uh, petting sassur not as strong as uh, starting off with the Magellan, mainly because petting sassur itself as your starting card you won't have that second body on board so yeah petting sassur just gets you this pretty much so if we're starting with just one Angeli, normal summon the Angeli, effect tribute itself off. Normally you would special summon Hoot Cake in like the old school plays, but we're actually going to special summon the Petting Sassur. Then Petting Sassur's effect will activate because it was special summoned. Special summoning the Pudding Sess. And then chocolate ala mode's effect detach special summoning the second messenger lotto and that one grabbing you your ticket and you're basically still in the same again the same board uh that petting sesur gave you starting off with magellan is your ideal starter but again it's just like if you don't draw into magellan and you draw into your uh your petting sesur or angeli these are the plays that you'll have all right and then one last combo this is going to be a going second just to show the OTK combo with the uh, Madolches, in case you guys don't know it. So we're going to use Magellan for this. You're going to normal summon the Magellan. And this is basically just going to be the same combos. So 
special summoning your second messengelato, getting you your ticket. Then activate ticket. We're going to go into our tiramisu here. Tiramisu is effects. You're going to detach, targeting the... Basically, you're going to target your pudding sets and your messengelato again, putting them back into the deck. And then shuffling two cards on your opponent's side of the field back to their deck. Then Ticket's Effect will activate because a Madolce card was sent from the graveyard to the deck. Special Summon the Messengelato. And you Special Summon it because you control a Fairy-type Madolce monster. Then Messengelato's Effect. You could add Promenade, um, but I mean, if you're going to go for an OTK and you know the OTK is going to go through, Promenade's useless. You're going to grab Chateau. You're going to activate the Chateau again. And then from here, you're going to overlay once more into your Tiramisu. Tiramisu's effect. Actually, you want to de detach this one, the Messengelato. And then the field spell, shuffle it to the deck. It. Then you'll shuffle another two cards your opponent controls. Then just style on them. Style on them. <laughs> so this is 3K, 6K, 9K, 11K. <laughs> so yeah, this is 11K that you just put on board. So yeah, this is uh, the OTK combo. Um, that's basically it for the combo section of this video. So yeah, that is the deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Madolce is still a fun deck for me to play personally. Interruptions and hand traps and stuff like that still hurt this deck quite a bit. Uh, if you don't have that salon in your hand, it is it can be quite difficult to play through hand traps. But anyways, yeah, that's the deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed it once again. And this is Devin of Garbage Squad signing out.